Hi, in this lesson I want us to look at the geological implications of sea level change, and in particular on uh, sedimentary environments that we might find in one particular place. This photograph is of part of the Fife coast uh, on the Firth of Forth on the east coast of Scotland. And I think in one photograph here we can see um, sea level change illustrated. You can see it's a coastal photograph. We've got a wave cut notch, you've got some seaweed down, down there in the bottom right hand corner. But the rock itself here is Aeolian desert sandstone, uh, which must have been deposited on land. It can't have been deposited in the environment uh, that it's now found. That tells us that through geological time, sea level has changed. I want us to look briefly at why and then spend a bit of time looking at the um, sedimentary record we get in this particular location. You're going to need the handout um, that's titled Transgression and Regression. Okay, this is a graph of sea level change over geological time. Now I must admit when I look at this, um, this graph it does really prompt some questions for me. Can you think of any questions that you'd want to ask um, about this graph? You can see what the range of uh, change we're talking about. Um, maybe about 300 metres. Maybe a little bit more. But for me, this graph makes me start thinking about what the graph actually shows. Uh, it makes me think why this would happen. You know, what actually causes these fluctuations over geological time. Uh, what geological evidence we have for this, uh, and why we've got to be a bit careful about a graph like this. This is looking at change over a very, very long period of time. And it does sort of, um, really, I think for me, suggest uh, problems of defining things by sea level. You know, it, it really isn't a fixed um, point on the Earth. Anyway. There are two key terms that we need to get our heads around for this. And these are new terms to us. What we call marine transgression and marine regression. Now marine transgression is an event where sea level rises. To transgress means to cross. So this is where the sea is crossing land. Um, sea level rises and it, uh, it covers up um, what was low-lying land and the coastline moves inland towards higher ground. Regression, or to regress, is to go backwards. So a regression is where um, the sea level goes down, um, which will expose shallow areas of the sea and turn those into land. So we can see that this, uh, this zone of land that's um, in between maybe 100, 200 metres above sea level down to maybe 100 metres below sea level at present is the zone in which um, most uh, impact of uh, sea level change will occur. Now, this lesson is all about the geological impact of that. What would that do? To the geological record? What would we see in the rocks that would tell us that this had occurred? Okay. Let's look at, first of all, what makes this sea level change. We have ocean basins. We have the lower parts of the Earth's surface that fill up with water. There is a finite amount of water on the Earth, the vast majority of it in the oceans, uh, a very small amount of it uh, as fresh water on land. But we do see an effect, we do see a change in sea level as a result of glacial periods. Uh, glacial ice traps water on land. So if that water is trapped on land, it can't be in the sea. 
So evaporation takes water out of the sea, puts it onto the land, where it's stored as glacial ice, and it can't go back into the sea. Sea level as a result is lowered. Now, if that glacial ice melts, what we'll see is the water from that glacial ice going into the ocean basins. So there's more volume of water in the ocean basin, so it takes up more space, so the sea level rises. And low-lying areas then can get submerged. So that uh, melting of the ice would cause a marine transgression. Formation of ice would cause a marine regression. Now it's not the only thing that can affect this, particularly over long geological periods. I mean, there's a lot of talk uh, about changing sea levels in response to climate change, but that's happening over a short period of time. Over longer geological periods of time, we need to consider some other features as well. Now, that could be the volume of the ocean basin itself and how that changes with plate tectonics. It could even be the eruption of um, large amounts of volcanic material, creating mid-ocean ridges, um, pushing sea levels higher as well. So we can see that over geological time, there's going to be a lot of influences on the level of the sea relative to the land. And that's before we even start getting talking about what affects the height of the land. Anyway, let's look at some effects of this. On your handout, you have um, this graphic log. Now, this graphic log uh, was recorded um, at a place called Kinghorn in Fife. Uh, like I say, on the east coast of Scotland, and we see um, really interesting um, sedimentary sequences there. You can see in what's actually quite a, um, a small sequence of sediments, um, only a few metres high, we're getting a lot of change. There's a lot of different rocks here. Now, what I'd like you to do is, first of all, I'd like you to make an interpretation about the sea level that each of these rock types shows us. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Once you've done that, I'd like you to get two colours to highlight episodes where the sea level, where we get marine transgression, where the sea level's risen, or where we get marine regression, where the sea level has fallen. Having done that then, can we come up with an interpretation of what's actually happened uh, in this. What was actually going on in the Carboniferous to create such a sequence of sediments? Now the way I'd like you to show your sea level uh, is I'd like you to plot it as if you like a line graph. Starting from the bottom there, we can see we have a terrestrial uh, environment that then changes to an estuarine one, so we're move my line to the right. The estuarine one becomes terrestrial again with a soil, so it has to be on land, so we get a movement to the left, and that continues then uh, as terrestrial. Can you continue this, um, uh, this line all the way to the top of the sequence, showing the changes as you go? Okay, press pause now and have a go at that. Okay, let's see what uh, we've come up with. First of all, let me show you my interpretation. So we end up with a graph that looks a little bit like this. With uh, some fairly big changes being represented there. Notice that the environments go from uh, the highest on the left-hand side to the lowest on the right. Okay, 
I also have asked you then to highlight um, episodes of re transgression and regression. I've highlighted transgression in green, regression uh, in orange. Okay, hopefully you've come up with something uh, similar there. We can see movements to the right showing a fall in sea level, movements to the left showing a rise in sea level. So what does this tell us then about the Carboniferous? Clearly it's a time of rapidly fluctuating sea levels. Within uh, only a few metres of, of the sequence, we're seeing a lot of sea level change. So we need to ask ourselves, what was actually happening in the Carboniferous that might cause this? You might remember when we were looking at plate tectonics, how there was evidence for um, the southern continents being together from a glaciation. This was happening at this time. So this is clearly related perhaps to the waxing and waning of um, continental ice sheets. It's really the only thing that's going to change um, sea level this rapidly and this frequently. Clearly this area in Kinghorn is right in this coastal zone where perhaps even only small changes of, of sea level are ha having a big effect on the environment of deposition. We also see, perhaps on a longer term scale, um, the effect of plate tectonics. The end of the Carboniferous, when these rocks were being laid down, um, is the time where Pangaea is coming together. The volume of ocean basins is changing. What did you come up with for your interpretation? Okay, to conclude then. These changing sea levels, marine transgressions and regressions, are reflected in the sedimentary record. They show us uh, why sedimentary, sedimentary environments can change over really short periods of time. And they've got to be controlled by uh, the location of water on the Earth's surface, this finite amount of water that we find uh, particularly in the ocean. Now this does have implications then for how uh, environments can change um, over time and in space. But that's for another lesson. I'll see you then.